is up people YouTube, it is I, Super Mario Zilla, or you can call me Vinny, and today we're going to take a look at the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Doctor Strange. This version of Doctor Strange obviously comes from the MCU movie Avengers Infinity War. In the film, Strange knows that Thanos is coming to Earth thanks to Bruce Banner. He goes to Tony Stark for help. Strange almost gets killed by Ebony Maw to protect the Time Stone. Strange agrees to take the fight to Thanos after Iron Man and Spider-Man save his life, and warns everyone on Titan that they only win one outcome against the Mad Titan. Strange unfortunately fades away with half of the other universe after Thanos snapped his fingers, because he gave Thanos the Time Stone uh, to save Tony Stark's life. This and Star-Lord are the first Infinity War figures to be released, with many more characters upcoming. Is Strange going to be worth it? Well, without further ado, let's get started. This version of Strange has slight differences from the original version. The blue is much lighter, and the cloak of levitation sports a brighter red. The face sculpt is great, actually, and the digital printing is much better and cleaner than the previous Doctor Strange. The likeness of Benedict Cumberbatch is not perfect, but still looks like him. The hair is a dark brown and sports some gray sideburns. And we have the atrocious sculpt cut from the previous Doctor Strange. Bleh. The clothes has a rigid, wrinkly-like sculpt, and it's done well. And the grid pattern is painted okay, I can't say it's great, but it's tolerable. The time stone in the Eye of Agamotto is painted this time, and the metallic green makes it pop. The belt is captured beautifully with all the straps, buckles, it's all well done here. Paint is not too bad here either. The arms have a wrinkly sculpt all the way down to the wristbands. The wristbands look good and the paint is cleaner here than the original Doctor Strange. The hands have blue gloves this time instead of them just being plain hands. The skirt continues to wrinkly like sculpt, and something I forgot to mention is that the blue does sport some shading. It's not showing up too well on camera, but trust me, it's there. The legs underneath have a wrinkly like sculpt and is much darker blue than the rest of the clothes. The boots have an awesome sculpt and the paint once again is pretty sweet here. And even went as far to give us a cool texture. The Cloak of Levitation, oddly enough, has no shading, but is a much more vibrant red than the original, which is nice. But some details, like I said before, have been lost, which is disappointing. Strange looks great, but the Cloak of Levitation will be bothersome, and the rest of the issues he has are minor and don't detract from the figure. Doctor Strange's articulation is pretty much the same as the originals. No ifs, ands, or buts, it's a fact. I don't see any new changes, so I'm gonna go over it pretty quick. Well, I'll go over to some detail, but yeah, hey, you get the gist. Head is on a double ball peg, so it can look up this high up. This far down. Has slight play. Can look left and right. The neck is also on a ball joint, so he does have more range. So that's good right there. Torso area is on a single ball joint. No ab crunch or anything, but he does crunch forward about this far. And for Doctor Strange, that's actually quite nice. He could crunch back about uh, this far, which, uh, that's pretty good. I'm wondering if, if I was wrong. Can he actually crunch forward a little bit more? Yeah, a little bit more, actually. So, uh, ab crunch movement is pretty good. You can also pivot. You know, you can do a lot with this. So, that's pretty cool. Arms are on ball joints. They have ball joint movement. They have butterfly joint movement. It can hinge up about this much. can go with full 360. It also acts as the bicep swivel. Not bad. We also get the double hinged elbow. It can move a little bit more, actually a lot more than 90 degrees, so that's good. Hand is on a ball hinge. Good range of there. We, we also get the typical, well not typical anymore, pull down style joint on the legs. So he does have more range. He could kick forward about uh, this much, which is fine. Doctor Strange does not need to do high jump kicks. He can move back about this far, which is for Doctor Strange, again, that, that's pretty good. It can actually do the splits because the skirt area does not prohibit any movement, really. Knees are double hinged. It can knee about this far, which is okay. And we do have ball jointed ankles. Yeah, uh, that'll happen. So, ankle rocker is not exactly the best. Especially since Doctor Strange does do, you know, a bit more dynamic posing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not exactly in the comics. But Doctor Strange does do, he does do flying poses most of the time, so I guess, you know, it's, it's acceptable. Still though, um, I j just wish the ankle rocker movement was better, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Uh, and toes on a hinge. 
pretty cool. And we have uh, this damn thing. Um, it's the same as the original Doctor Strange. There's a hinge right here. Cannot swivel like the Injustice figures. We get a swivel and a hinge. Well, actually, two swivels, actually. The, the, hell, the hell am I thinking? Yeah, like I said before, these plastic capes, uh, they're, they're not good. I prefer cloth. And what else sucks, which I did not mention in my last Doctor Strange review, we got these ugly joints sticking out. Like, it's pure metal. And uh, you can clearly see that, especially in some poses. It, if you have a cloth cape handy, uh, I would use that, to be perfectly honest, because this thing sucks. This thing... This thing is absolute torture. It, it's a complete eyesore if you cannot angle it correctly. So, yeah, that's... That's not good. That is just not good. I mean, I don't know why they keep on doing that. It's like, it's like, do you people ever listen? Do you ever learn? Whatever. Whatever. Uh, uh, I'll live. It's, uh, it's not like it causes the end of the world or anything, but still, it's, it still sucks. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stand by that. Still, though, um, Doctor Strange, he's plenty posable, and if you need him in some cool sorcerer-type poses or want to go a bit... Um, dynamic, like a pose like this, you can get Doctor Strange into any pose you desire, well, almost any pose you desire, because, you know, he can't do everything, obviously. So, if you get this Strange, but expect more articulation, if you already have the other Doctor Strange, just lower the expectations, because it's exactly the same. But if this is your first Doctor Strange, you'll have a blast. Articulation, and he gets a thumbs up. To the top of his head, Doctor Strange stands just a bit over five and a half inches tall. Some people say he's too short, but he was never really that much of a big dude, so he shouldn't stand out. Here he is with the figure arts Rocket Raccoon and Star-Lord. Here he is with the figure arts Tony Stark and Iron Man Mark 46. Here he is with the figure arts Ant-Man and Black Panther. Here he is with the figure arts Captain America and Marvel Legends Eel. And finally, here he is with the Marvel Legends Captain Britain and Whirlwind. Strange stands just fine with the other figure arts, so I really don't see where the complaints are coming from. He'll fit in with the crew just fine. Strange comes with no exclusive accessories since this version was not brought here in the US by Bluefin, but he still comes with a nice amount of accessories. First is the neutral head that was on him in the package, and next is the angry teeth gritted head which looks a bit odd at some angles, I'm not gonna lie. For the hands he comes with two fist hands that were on him in the package, two splayed out open hands, Two calm, relaxed hands. Two hands, which I swear can be used for the spark portal, I'm not sure. Two magic hands. And finally, two hands for the magic effects. Speaking of which, here are the two orange magic effects. The detail is excellent and look very magical. We also get a time stone effect piece, which is awesome. A very nice occlusion. Any of the discs fits just fine on the pegs, and it is a bit tricky to get them onto the first time so try not to break the effects. Alternatively, you can pop off the hands and place the disc on the ball hinge itself and pop the hand back on, which is a nice option. Finally, we have the Spark Portal, a much welcome addition to the figure. The detail they added looks great, and do be aware, it's just flat plastic and is very easy to scratch. To use, all you have to do is slip the bottom part into these two little clips. It's easy as one, two, three. Doctor Strange is not too shabby with the accessories, but if you were hoping for a possible extra with the Bluefin release, uh, sorry buddy. So, buy, don't buy, or wait for a sale. This is a good figure, but the aftermarket is going to sting you a bit with this. And honestly, I wouldn't be worried because the original Doctor Strange is still available on the market. With that being said, there's virtually no reason to get this, unless if you're a diehard fan of the Doctor, or really want the new effects. Now, it doesn't mean the figure is bad, that just means Bandai released this version too soon. But because of how badass Doctor Strange is, I bet you that's why he's sold out so fast. With that being said, I'll give Doctor Strange a 9 out of 10. Well, that's it. Thanks guys and gals so much for watching. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you would like to be updated on when new videos goes up, be sure to subscribe. If you want to be notified when new videos go live, be sure to hit that bell icon. And if you want some behind the scenes stuff, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Link to it is down below. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.